continuing with the uh, number 2 we will start with the uh, parallel operation of okay? transformers what do you mean by parallel operation of the transformer by practical operation we mean two or more transformers they are connected to the same supply bus bars on the primary side and to common bus bar or a load on the secondary side that is the set of transformer primary is connected to common supply bus and the secondary of the transformers uh, they are connected to the common bus bar that is load on the secondary then we are calling this as a the parallel operation of the the transformers the reasons that necessitate parallel operation are as follows that is why you are connecting the transformers in parallel the first reason for connecting the transformer in parallel is non availability of single large transformer to meet the the total load requirement for example i have got 100 megabyte of the 100 mva load should be the supply okay in that case it is not possible to install 100 mva transformer so large of capacity transformer okay it is not available in that case what i am using that is smaller capacity so for, for example 25 mva transformer having four number they are connected in parallel so that the catering units of the 100 mva load that is one point we will elaborate that one the power demand might increase over the time necessitate necessitating augmentation of capacity more transformer connected in parallel will then be pressed into service for example i have taken the first example my load is 100 mva then instead of connecting 100 mva transformer which is so big then i am using 25 mva transformers of four number connected in parallel suppose my load increase from 100 to 150 mva that is subsequently there is a enhancement in the load in the system then it is not possible if you are using only 100 mva transformer previously then you have to replace by 150 mva totally you have to scrap the 100 mva transformer therefore if there is an increase in the load there is an increase in the load if the smaller capacity transformers they are connected in parallel smaller capacity transformer connected in parallel suppose now previously about 100 mv i have connected four number of the 25 mv transformer now load is increased from 100 mv to 150 mv in that case i am adding two more to the, the system two more to the system that is my capacity is increased from 100 mva to 150 mva it is very easy to enhance the to meet the extra demand as and when it is cooked up that is the second advantage of connecting the transformer in parallel then to ensure improved reliability even in one of the transformer gets into the fault or it take out for maintenance or repair the load can be continued to be served that is the one once again the, i am using the same example suppose i have got 100 mva load then i have got meeting that mva load for a single 100 mva transformer suppose the transformer have got some fault or it is come for the repair work then you have to totally set up the total load instead of that suppose i have got 25 mva transformer having four number then any one of the transformer coming to the the service 
that can be taken up. At least 75% of the load can be met with the remaining three transformers. Or, in other words, there is a standby unit in that one. That is, extra standby unit can be started so that there is a continuity of the supplies there to the, the consumers. Thereby, it is the to ensure the improvement reliability. That is, if you are using a single transformer, if you have got any fault, or it is come into the any fault conditions, or it come for the repair work, then there is a reliability of the supply is not there because you have to cut down the, the load because for maintenance and taking out from the, the system if you are using a single unit. To reduce the spare capacity or you can call a standby. That is I am meeting the 100 MVA load with 25 MVA 4 number the transformer. Okay, then in case of the emergency suppose any one transformer has got a fault or you have to take it from the, the service. Then the extra 25 MVA that what I am calling is a standby unit. Instead of 4 transformer, I am installing 5 transformer. That is one I am keeping as a the standby. The capacity of the standby unit is 25 MVA only. 25 MVA only. Suppose instead of that, I have got a 100 MVA transformer. I have got a 100 MVA transformer and it is getting the use of 100 MVA. Suppose for a star standby, I want to keep it for reliability of the power supply. In that case, I need a standby equivalent to 100 MPA if I am using single uh, transformer. That is the disadvantage of having a larger capacity transformer which can be indicated in the case of a large loads. Instead of in practice, even though the uh, load is large and smaller capacity transformer, they are connected in parallel and they are supply the, the load okay that is to reduce the spare capacity that is the if the number of small units connected in parallel the standby unit capacity is less as well as the cost of the standby unit is also the less okay then when transportation problems limit the installation of large transformers that is if you are using only 100 mva transformer it has got very large size then there is a problem with the transport, uh, transport, uh, transportation to the, the site, they are very in the remote places. At the same time, the installation has got a, a problem. Instead of that, if you have got a smaller units, they are connected in parallel. The transportation is also very easy, the installation is also easy. These are the important things that uh, necessitate the, the transformer, they are connected in parallel. That is, it is non availability of the single largest transformer to meet the large load, therefore they are connected in parallel. The power demand is increasing as and when the power demand increases, the smaller units goes on adding to the system. That is very easy. To ensure the improving uh, the reliability, even in one of the transformer gets into a fault, that is if the number of units are connected in parallel, if any one of the, the transformer go into out of order, then it can be replaced by a standby unit and there is a continuity of the, the power supply. To reduce the spare capacity, that is the, the cost of the spare capacity you can reduce if the number of units of having a smaller capacity they are connected in the parallel. That is a larger transformer have got a transportation problem as well as the, the installation problem. Thereby to minimize those the, the problems then what they are going for, a smaller unit they are connected in parallel instead of a single unit. Then before connecting the two or more number of transformer, certain condition has to be the fulfilled. What are those conditions that we see? The first condition is that the voltage ratio must be the same. That is if two or more number of transformer they are connected in parallel, their voltage ratio must be the same. That is a first condition. The second condition is that the per unit impedance of each machine. That is, I will define subsequently what you mean by the per unit impedance. That is, at this point, you can remember that the per unit impedance of each machine on its own base must be the same. That is, the per impedance uh, of each transformer must be same when they are connected in parallel. The third one, we have what? The polarity must be the same. 
the polarity of the transformer must be same so that there is no circulating current between the, the transformer. Therefore, you have to properly connect the transformers in parallel. That is, the polarity must be the same. That is, voltage just, uh, ratio must be same. Polarity must be the same. The per impedance of the all the machines or the all the transformers must be the same. The fourth one is the ratio of reactance and resistance ratio of the transformers also must be the same. Voltage ratio must be same. Per impedance must be the same. The polarity must be the same. The reactance by resistance ratio of the, the transformers should be the same. The same. These are the, the four important conditions when the two or more number of a transformer they are connected in a panel. I am explaining here there are two transformers. The whatever so far I explained just you have to look into here. There are two transformers they are connected in a parallel here. They are marked with the, uh, marked with the, the polarity here. There are two transformers TA and TB. I, I told you that is a primary is connected to the supply bus having the voltage up, uh, supply voltage is V1. See here, uh, the primary of the two windings they are connected in the supply bus and the secondaries are connected to the, the load bus. This is I have got a load bus. These secondaries are connected to the, the load bus. Okay, then across the load bus, then there is a load is connected. These are the induced voltage in the primary E1, E1 in the, the transformer T and TB and E2 are the, the induced voltage in the secondary of the transformer 1 and 2 or T and TB and the load is connected across the, the load bus and they are supplying this load is supplied by the, the two individual transformer IA and IB then the total current here is IA plus IB that is the primary is connected to the supply bus. Let's see the, the connection diagram. See polarity you can see here. Same polarity point should be connected to the same bus you can see here. Here also you can see this is connected here. This is also connected here. This is a proper polarity. Then the voltage E1 and E1 must be same so that they are connected in parallel. Here ratio here also the, the voltage must be the same. This is how we have to connect the two or more number of transformers. They are connected in parallel. That is, if you look into the, the different points what we have discussed so far. If instead of, for, for example, this is a 100 MPa load, then instead of using two 50-50 MPa a transformer, if you are using only one transformer having 100 MPa, get in the lead of this particular load. Then anything happens to be that particular one single transformer, then the whole load should be not supplied. It is under dark. It is disconnected. It is not at all 100% the failure. In that case, it is not possible to supply to the, the load. Therefore, the reliability comes into picture. Instead of that, I have got it, the number of transformers they are connected in parallel. Suppose any one of the transformers goes into out of order, at least 50% of the load is saved by the one of the transformers which is connected in parallel. Otherwise, there is a standby unit which is connected here that is caters uh, the need of the, the whichever there is a fault in transformer in the system connected in a pattern. Okay, that is how you have to, the, to connect the, the transformer to or more number of transformer in a pattern. Then, parallel operation of the load sharing between the transformer with the equal ratio that we will see in the next session. Just I will give the brief introduction about this particular parallel operation of load sharing to the transformer how to draw the equivalent circuit diagram for parallel connection that we will see then the equation will derive in the next, next session always two transformers of equal voltage ratio are selected for working in a parallel that is the first condition of pa connection, parallel connection of the transformer that is a voltage have a equal voltage ratio this way one can avoid circulating current between the transformer if you have got a different voltage ratio, instead of the current is flowing here to the load, in that case there should be some current which is flowing between the transformer. That current is called as the circulating current. If both have got the same uh, potential or voltage ratio, then E2 and E2 they are exactly equal and opposite, but with respect to each other the voltage is zero, so that there should not be any circulating current. 
if there is a mismatch between the these voltages in that case there is a possibility of the current which is flowing in the between the, the transformer that can be avoided that is why what he is telling us that this way one can avoid the circulating current between the, the transformers load can be switched on subsequently to these buses first you have to connect the transformer in panel subsequently you have to switch on to the, the to the load bus then while drawing this uh, the parallel operation uh, equation you have to derive so that what is the load set by the individual transformer for drawing the, the actual diagram connected in parallel of the transformer once again you are using approximate equivalent circuit diagram of the transformer neglecting the, the parallel branch circuit parameters that is R0 and X0 the same thing is what is telling here that is neglecting the parallel branch of the equivalent circuit can be shown in the figure that I will show you in the next diagram. Then the equivalent circuit is drawn in terms of secondary parameters. Usually it is drawn referred to the, the second side because the load is connected in the secondary. The equivalent circuit is drawn in terms of secondary terms. This may be further be simplified as shown here. That is whatever the parallel connections were connected subsequently in the step by step will go on you can reduce it. The first thing what I am considering is the transformer having the equal ratio. That is both having the equal ratio. The voltage of across the two transformer must be the same by virtue of the common connection, the input as well as the output ends. Because it is connected to common, common bus, therefore the voltage across the bus is remains constant. Therefore, voltage of across the two transformer must be the same by virtue of common connection at input as well as output ends. Okay, just I have once again drawn the, the circuit diagram, just I have twisted or uh, just like I have tilted this particular figure for accommodating the, the equivalent circuit diagram here. That is, there are two transformers A and B. The primary is connected here. You can see here this one first bus, second bus, that is a supply bus, this is a load bus. Just you can observe here, it is connected here, this is also connected here, this here. And at the second side, you can observe here, this particular end is connected here, so that there is a uh, it has to supply to the, the supply to the this particular load. Just if you are drawing the, the same thing, this buses I am drawing here, that is supply bus. This is a load bus. Okay. Then the transformer A can be represented by its equivalent impedance ZA, ZA or RA plus XA. That is equivalent resistance of the, the transformer A, equivalent reactance of the transformer. That is what our value is ZA. That is connected between this and this end. That is what I am doing here is C here. Started here and it is ended here starting point here and ended, ended here then once again there is a the return path also no? there is a return path also therefore how exactly that is the return path I have to do it see here starting here the current is flowing. this is connected across these two and here it is the input side that is one of the transform will I will draw and I will show you how exactly it is drawn. That is the equivalent circuit diagram of the, the primary, sorry refer to the secondary, it is drawn with RA and XA. Similarly, the XB is also uh, drawn, that is RB and XB, that is the, the equivalent resistance and the impedance, then this is the, the common bus which is, then in the subsequent uh, session we will look into the how exactly the load is set between the two transformers in the, the next session.